Welcome back, suckers. Tater Jr. You said you were going to be nice. I don't want to call them suckers. They're not suckers. What? These fools. What, what's with your accent today? I just thought I'd try something new. Hi, Lexi. Hi, Jaden. Hi, Sarah. Are you going to say hi to the guys? No, they're suckers. That is so mean. <sighs> You're fired again. <sighs> Welcome back again to History with Mr. E. What are you doing here, Gollum? Why did this hear about the ring, Precious? No more. In the 1950s, we're talking about 21.1 to 1 today, in the 1950s, the war is over. Uh, yes, we're fighting in in Korea, but World War II is over. Korea, we talked about last time, so today we're not going to talk about war. We're going to talk about social things, I guess you could say, the society of the 1950s. The American way, the baby boom, the change in American society after World War II and, and basically after Korea or, you know, during the Korean War. The first thing we're going to talk about from the 1950s is the baby boom. Families grew rapidly. Everybody got married and had kids and and there was a massive need for goods and services. After World War II, people wanted their own home. You know, before World War II, it might be a big giant house with two or three generations of a family living in it. Grandma and Grandpa, Mom and Dad, maybe Mom and Dad's brother and sister, and then all of their kids. And maybe one of them would get married and just stay in the house. A lot of times you had multi-generation houses. That's why you see so many monstrous sized houses if you ever go to an old city like Pittsburgh. Um, because multiple generations lived in these houses. After the war, though, they built tons and tons of little houses. You know, little tiny two-bedroom or three-bedroom houses. We called them, They called them row houses. They called them war houses. Um, just little teeny tiny houses for one family. I mean, they weren't all teeny tiny. They were ranch houses. They would build entire blocks and streets and street after street after street of, of, of these little houses that were almost exactly alike, um, from the outside. Of course, then you got to paint them whatever color you wanted and things like that. But there was a huge housing boom. I had an uncle who, who built houses in Boardman uh in austin town ohio made a lot of money doing it you can go through parts of bowling green now if you drive down 13th street you can find the pre-world war ii houses and then a couple blocks over you'll find the post-world war ii houses the pre-world war ii houses were you know three stories high and and giant the post-world war ii houses were little ranch houses or little little cottage sized houses and the streets were just packed with them This was a massive, after World War II, the, you know, with all these, the baby boom and a lot of soldiers came back and married or were married already and wanted to raise families and have a piece of land of their own. And this was a massive economic transition for America. You know, people were moving to the suburbs. Uh, there was a lot of good moral Christian standards that came along in this era. The moral strength of America was excellent. Uh, Billy Graham began his ministry during this era. Um, unfortunately, we lost missionaries in South America. Um, Elizabeth Elliot wrote a book called Through the Gates of Splendor, um, where the Aka Indians of Ecuador killed five missionaries. I think there's a, a couple movies, a documentary or movie about it also. 
This was an era of strong families. Divorce was a tragedy. Small towns had low crime rates. Gambling was illegal. Uh, America believed in capital punishment. Um, abortion was made illegal or was still illegal. And through strong families, through this hard work ethic, America's economy thrived. People worked hard, people saved money, people invested money, and the economy grew. A lot of new technologies came about during this area, era. Um, because there were so many more housewives, you know, every wife wanted to have their own family and, and to do their thing um, in their family. And so there were a lot of new innovations in, in, the, in the kitchen. Uh, for example, you could buy a cake mix. And if you've ever made a cake nowadays from a cake mix, you'll know that you have to add water, oil, and eggs to a cake mix. And then all the other stuff, the sugar, salt, uh, flour, baking powder, baking soda, whatever, is already built into the, and flavoring, of course, is already built into the cake mix. You know, you can make any cake from flour and other ingredients. You don't have to have a cake mix. And American women wanted wanted to make those cake cakes and things for their husbands. But the original cake mixes, all you had to do was add water. Everything was put already put into it. Powdered oil, powdered eggs. All the ingredients were in one thing, but the women didn't like it. They felt like all they were doing was cheating. So they actually ended up taking some ingredients out of the cake mix and you had to add them yourself and you felt more like baking. Um, and American housewives established themselves. And it wasn't just cake mixes. It was things like casseroles, like hamburger helper, or, or just being able to design the how you wanted your kitchen to look you know what kind of countertops what color wallpaper what type of dishes you wanted there was so much more color and vibrancy to the world especially because of plastics um that were easily manipula manipulatable you know to make into what you wanted them to look like rather than just here's your white plate Here's your white glass or clear clear glass glass. Here's your countertops are going to be white. Your walls are going to be white. If you have tile in your bathroom, it's probably going to be white. Um, so they changed a lot of that in this era. The economy grew. People began to save money and invest money. Uh, There's a lot of new technology like uh, jet uh, propulsion for airplanes, early computers, new types of medicine, lasers, uh, film and video. Um, and of course, there was the housing boom, which we talked a little bit about already. A lot of servicemen got money through something called the Service Servicemen's Readjustment Act. And... the GI Bill of Rights, which gave low interest loans from the government um, for veterana veterinarians, for veterans of the war. And they, they were able to buy homes and farms and businesses and to pay college tuition. 12 million men and women qualified for these loans. And there was a massive, massive demand for new houses. Uh, Levitt and Sons was the first major company to, to buy into this new housing market. And they built, in the 1940s, they started with low-cost housing that we already talked about. They built a town called Levitt Town on Long Island with 6,000 homes. Each home cost exactly $8,000. You could rent the home in order to own it. Um, other companies followed suit all over the nation. 
Um, there's a massive shift from the farm to the city, from the city to the suburbs. In 1930, 33% of people lived and worked on farms. And from 1940 to 1970, um, that shifted from 25% on farms in 1940 to 5% on farms in 1970. That's a major shift. And then people were moving from the city to the suburb. In the 1950s, most families had, you know, instead of living in an apartment in a city or in a house in a city and riding a train or a bus to where you went or even walking to places, they shifted to the suburbs where every American had a house and a car. One million people per year moved to the suburbs after World War II, and by the 1960s, there were more people living in the suburbs than there were living in the cities. Um, cities with suburbs became major metropolitan areas, and people just kind of spread out. Another thing that was born during this era was supermarkets. Uh, they were widespread and made it easy to move uh, goods from place to place because there were so many of them. You could get fresh fruit in any city, vegetables in any city from anywhere around. Um, you know, it wasn't just whatever was local. You could also get, say, bananas from Brazil or wherever they grow bananas or coconuts from Hawaii, or pineapples from Hawaii, or avocados from from California, right here in Kentucky. Um, which is something you guys lived with since you were born and since time out of mind, but that's not the way it always was. You could also get any type of meat or dairy product. And the supermarket was born because these stores weren't just your, your regular five and dime. They provided all of the different foods and services. They had in the store a greengrocer, which is your fruits and vegetables, a butcher, which is your meat, a dry goods, which is your, you know, flour and cake mixes and that kind of stuff. And they were all combined into one large store and supermarket, which we don't even think of as anything special. We think of places like Food Lion or Piggly Wiggly or Kroger is the small stores compared to the monster super centers like Walmart. Health improved during this area. Uh, Jonas Salk created a vaccine for a disease called polio, which, which had run rampant through America and Europe for years, a debilitating disease of the legs that kept people from being able to walk right for their entire life. My, uh, my, my great uncle John had polio and almost didn't get to come to America because of it. When, when my family immigrated, my grandfather carried him through immigration. And when they wanted to look at the baby, he'd say, Oh no, no, the baby's sleeping. Leave him alone. That's how he kind of smuggled my, my, uh, my great uncle into America with a disease that would have kept him out of the States. Uh, not a good thing, really, especially during thinking about it during the COVID era. So there was a polio vaccine in the 1950s, and then we came up with vaccines for measles, mumps, and other deadly diseases like diphtheria, tetanus, and the whooping cough. Some of these diseases are coming back nowadays because of the ignorance of anti-vaxxers. Um... And I don't care if you're an anti-vaxxer, your parents are anti-vaxxers. That's just silly and, and stupid. Um, these vaccines wiped out, almost completely wiped out these diseases and made America a safe and healthy place to live. There was major technology. Think of technology in clothing. You had clothes, uh, the, the, the cloth called polyester was developed. It was a, a, a synthetic cloth, which allowed you to wash and wear your clothes without having to press it, because it didn't wrinkle. You could make clothes in any bright color you wanted. Um, we had durable plastic, uh, you know, your Tupperware type stuff, um, or whatever plastic that could was so strong and so long lasting that it could replace glass, like instead you have plexiglass. It could replace wood 
in a lot of situations. I've seen whole, you know, house decks made of plastic um, type composites, and it they also replaced wood and things like bowls, mixing bowls, and plates oftentimes. And then you also had lots of uh, metal items that were being replaced by plastic. You had formica countertops instead of wooden or stone countertops, and with bright colors, and which allowed housewives to have a personality when decorating their house. And then this also became an era of leisure and recreation. Baseball was integrated, which meant black men were allowed to play with white men in baseball, thanks to Jackie Robinson and some other brave ball players. Um, music became popular again. Uh, Marian Anderson, the greatest opera singer of her day, was actually a black woman. She sang for 75,000 people at the Lincoln Memorial. This this type of thing was unheard of, especially for people of of different races to do, and and it was awesome. We also had, you know, baseball and football were were gaining momentum. College sports were popular. And people had leisure time on their hands. One of the major industries that came up in America because of the interstate highway system and because everybody had their own cars was tourism. People could get out and do things now and, and had leisure time to do stuff. Tourism became a major industry. My, my grandparents were from Cleveland, Ohio, and they went on their honeymoon to guess where? Oh, good guess. That's right. Mammoth Cave was was where they went on their honeymoon. I actually have an ashtray from from their honeymoon, and of course I don't smoke, but I still have an ashtray because it's a it's an heirloom from Mammoth Cave from the nineteen late forties, early fifties, I guess nineteen fifty ish. Tourism became a major industry. Seventy million American tourists. Um were going to places like national parks, like Mammoth Cave, or Yosemite, or whatever, and they were going to monuments, touring Washington, D.C., going to great battlefields like Gettysburg, and seeing monuments. And it gave Americans a great feeling of national pride and unity, to go see the parts of the United States that they'd only heard of, to see those purple mountains majesties and those amber waves of grain that we sing about. To see this land, this beautiful land of America, and to be able to do that on your own without having to watch a, a show or read a book. It was awesome. This was also the beginning of the overseas travel by air. In 1958, passenger jets like the Boeing 707 were built, and you could fly overseas. Um, it was also the era of the first theme parks, like Disneyland, which was built in 1955. And then, of course, the last thing we're going to talk about today is one of the major, major things uh, that happened in the American public, or to the American public, was the advent uh, and proliferation of the television. In the 1950s, televisions replaced radios in almost every home. There were three major stations, NBC, ABC, and CBS, and guess what? They're still the three major stations. Of course, there's Fox, and there's all the other, other cable stations, but everybody in America had a television. And by the 1960s, they weren't all black and white TVs. They were color TVs. Uh, and I'll close this one with a funny story. My dad had a black and white TV, and they wanted to see it to be a color TV. So they went to the they went to the five and ten and bought a color converter for their television, which is basically a piece of plastic with a blue part across the top and a green part across the bottom to make it look like sky and green grass. And if that's not completely ridiculous, I don't know what is, but. It was a different day and age, and things were changing rapidly, and America was growing. Don't forget to work on your papers, guys, and have a good day.